Well, I would usually have an intro open, but uh, I don't. You know why? Because Alice Shattuck has, uh, she can't join us for the show, it looks like. Alice, I'm not allowed to say where exactly she is, but she has a fever and she went somewhere to have somebody check it out. I'll just say that. Uh, It could be a bunch of stuff. Could be COVID, could be something else. I'm not even sure. I don't want to get in trouble by speculating. It's not a baby. Can't be a baby. No, it's not a baby or else there'd be a bottle of Jack Daniels right here. All right. So um, so here we go. I guess that the, the most, uh, what we can start with today, are the most insane thing that's going on today. Am I centered? Is this okay? How am I doing? I don't do this without Alice. There we go. There we go. I'm mostly centered now, right? So the, today was just another example of how this administration, they're not serious about administrating. They're not serious about the job that they're supposed to have. And so it used to be that there were, you know, uh, sporadic wacko sightings here and there um, in the, in the, um, uh, in the United uh, States. Oh, man. Uh, I'm just seeing something that, that uh, Turtle Boy sa- sent, and it's uh, an elected official in Massachusetts who's naked on our OnlyFans. That's fine. So uh, let's... Wow. Wow. So let's start here. This is the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. Remember, he got in trouble for killing somebody, shooting somebody. He shot a couple of people, but he killed one guy. But the, the guy who was lying on the ground, you remember, who was... Um, who was, uh, Rittenhouse was lying on the ground, but when he was lying on the ground, a guy came over and tried to aim at him and kill him, and Rittenhouse shot him, blew his arm off, really. And that guy was testifying today. In what I would say is a bad testimony for this guy who got his arm shot off, and good for Rittenhouse. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. Oh, s***, that's it! Oh. Sorry. Sorry about that. I didn't realize this was hosted. But yes, he said correct. In other words, the guy says, uh, yes, I was about to blow Kyle Rittenhouse's face off and uh, that happened. So I think Rittenhouse is out of uh, out of the woods, to say the least. Now, um, let's go to, there's an incredible, it was really the rollout of Pete Buttigieg. There was an incredible, Alice keeps sending me stuff from the waiting room in her facility so it keeps knocking what i need to get to down but april ryan who's you know a dumb person it's fine but she's a white house reporter she's talking to pete Buttigieg. pete's all excited today because they were we're wasting uh, more than a trillion and a half dollars on infrastructure it's probably gonna end up being about two trillion uh infrastructure pipe dreams and woke infrastructure and april ryan because she's dumb and not really a reporter but an activist even though she gets paid very well as a reporter she asks him she wants to know all about the woke infrastructure you give us the construct of how you will deconstruct the racism that was built into the roadways that you talked to the real earlier so this is this psychotic is actually uh, obviously asking him um about um this is Secretary of Transportation about racism in the roadways, and Pete's happy to play along because he knows how to speak the language. He knows that that wokeism run on run lives. Not that there wasn't obviously, if you had no political capital, uh, oftentimes historically, then you'd get the raw end of the deal. You know, it's the it's one of the reasons why Massachusetts roads are so odd um, is that it, like 128 is a, is a road that it was, goes both south and north because, um, you know, it, these people, you played politics and a lot of people don't want roads near them. A lot of people did want roads near them and they also the tech belt and all that stuff. But, but anyway, obviously, historically, well, money talks, money and power talks. So marginalized communities generally get the, the bleep end of the deal because uh, they had no power and there's no good representation. So that's what's considered all the racism, et cetera. It's mostly classism, if anything, that happened. Uh, but it's it ain't worth talking about. We're talking about roads and bridges here. But April Ryan, and these are the same people who tell us, by the way, that, that critical race theory doesn't exist in classrooms. 
um, they can't help but mention critical race theory elements every third word. So here we go, back to April Ryan. I'll try not to uh, uh, step on her too much. You broke that information with us. Can you talk to us about how that could be deconstructed? For sure, yeah. So you know, the principle of Justice 40 is that at least 40% of the clean investments in this bill will go to benefit the communities that are overburned, overburdened and, and underserved. So part one of that is defining those those investments that are eligible, and that's a lot of it, and we're working to map out kind of program by program, mode by mode, uh, what would qualify. For example, if we're uh, buying clean buses, right, how do we make sure in terms of where those buses go, but also looking at the business opportunity, the jobs that are going to be created, the businesses that, that uh, will have a chance to compete uh, for, for the business opportunities it creates. That, too, I think is a very important element of equity here that's in the spirit here of Justice it is. 40. And again, we have a lot of guidance and oversight from the White House since that's an administration-wide initiative. But we know that we've got to build our own internal uh, kind of ways of, of uh, aligning and defining that inside the administration. As to where... Sounds expensive and slow, doesn't it? We target those those dollars. You know, I, I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a The highways weren't built to divide neighborhoods. The highways were built to move cars. Now, no doubt that the placement of them being right on the edge of the white neighborhood was probably a lot to do with the power and influence at the time. But if we're going to do this with everything and dissect everything through this lens of race, then you are kidding me then we're not going to get anything done. But that's this administration. This administration is playing make-believe, as we talk about every day. So we're looking for racist roads everywhere. A bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a you beach, that right. or that would have been, uh, in New York, was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by. But that obviously reflects... <coughs> Those are racist bridges in New York that he's saying. Um, uh, that the, the, They're designed to keep people away from the beach, etc. Yes, that's where we are. That's racism that went into those designs. Racism choices. went into designs, um, yep. I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think Can you not confront it with our multi-billions of dollars? Can you confront it with you and your shrink and your little spirit groups of social justice uh, wannabe heroes? We have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting... Can Just build the effing roads. How about that? Build the effing roads and bridges, okay? Be forward-looking. And by the way, the racist highways and bridges that are um, that are you know meant to to keep people away from the cool parts of town because of the color of their skin. There's been huge gentrification everywhere, okay? So anything that was built in 1956 uh, is surrounded by ever-changing neighborhoods at, at this point. So this is just I mean, you know what it is. It's ridiculous. You can't live in a world. The sounding board of wokeism, woke, and it just, it just, uh, you know, expands exponentially, until nobody in the room can make anything and do anything. It's crazy. This is the people's front of Judea, you know, having the you circular arguments that they can't get out of. They can't. Well, that's not woke enough. But what about this? Well, you have to be woke, woke, woke. But what about this? You have to be woke, 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 It's, it's anti-intellectual and it's counterproductive. But it is a part of this. This is what the modern left wants right now, more than ever. They want to be in these discussions of echo chamber of uh, woke of woke uh, sentiments, and they want it to happen uh, in force. And and it, it, it's it's about chanting. It, it, that's that's what's more important to them than actually getting the stuff done. It's just going through the exercise. That is the point. Remember, this infrastructure, nobody even knew. Uh, the, the next infrastructure, nobody even knows what it's supposed to be doing. All we know is it's supposed to be big. Let it be big. What's it going to do? We don't know. It has to be big because big is woke. It's like craziness. And this, but okay, back to back to him. We were talking about he's the rogue roads and uh, no racist roads and bridges. Communities, that billion dollars is something we want to get to work right away, uh, uh, putting to work. But that's such a heavy lift. I mean, you have to reconstruct <clears throat> communities that this happened to. As you said, some of these beltways... You hear this? You have to reconstruct the whole communities. 
Well, now, in a real world, you would say, okay, shut up. You obviously don't know what you're talking about. Just go sit down. Fine. You've, it's been fun playing with you, April. But no, we're letting her, we're, uh, we're uh, you know, we're uh, indulging in this because she's speaking wokeism, and now we all have to speak wokeism. So we're entertaining all this horse bleep when we shouldn't be. And, and interstates and roadways were built before the Civil Rights Act, before the Voting Rights Act, and were made meant to be racist. But how do you go about And we're meant to be racist. Yep, absolutely. All the roadways are meant to be racist. All the roadways are meant to be racist. It's like, just shut up already. God, you stupid idiots. Everybody here. Oh, God, they're so stupid. Can you imagine reducing everything to this? Things must be really good in your life if you have the time to sit around and think about which roads are racist and which ones aren't. Of redefining and replanning these roadways and communities that are already settled in. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's interesting is it's going to vary by community, and we have to listen to the community. Sometimes it really is the case oh, that that's an overpass a great one. went in a certain way that is so harmful that it's got to come down or maybe psycho be put underground. Other times, maybe it's not that way. Maybe the really important thing is to connect across it, to add rather than subtract. And that's where we don't want to impose a one-size-fits-all answer uh, from here. But when we were out in Syracuse, for example, looking at I-81, we saw the local vision. Uh, for how they want to get past those divisions. And those local ideas are going to be taken very seriously as we try to meet the spirit of this law. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Great. I feel good knowing that this guy's got about $180 billion at his, uh, of our money uh, in his pocket to do whatever woke thing he wants to. <sighs> what do you even say? What do you even say? And they can't stop it. And these people are nuts. Now, this next thing, actually, let's call Alice. You want to call Alice? See what she's up to? See how she's doing? A little, a little uh, status check on Alice A.O. Shattuck. Uh, you know what? Let me see if I can call her on Google, the, the Google thing. Actually, I have uh, Google Voice. Google Voice. And there she is, Alice Shattuck. Do anybody know her number? Uh, what is Alice's number? There we go. There we go. Let's see if we can get Alice a Shattuck here. Oh, three, three, nine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, calling Alice Shattuck as we speak. This should be a cool. <laughs> All right. There's a green twice. Let me see. Alice is probably dodging me. Oh, damn it, you called the wrong freaking number. Uh, well done. Sorry about that, guys. You know, live TV. Here we go. Ready? We're calling now. Calling now. Oh, it is her. Let's see. Uh, calling Alice Shattuck. After we're done with this, uh, you're not going to believe this beautiful piece of TV, just to show you how insane things are, CNN anchor got blown up. Hi, you've reached Oh, Alice. come on. Send me a message or send me a text and I'll call you back. Answer. The mailbox is full and of cannot accept is. any messages at this time. Goodbye. Well, that was that. All right, so this is CNN. I have, I don't know if I've ever quite ever seen this happen. I've seen a lot of stupid anchors on CNN and Brianna Keeler is one of them and it's fine. She's a, she, Maybe she's a good person. I, I Probably not, but that's fine. Uh, but anyway, the Florida governor, the former governor of, of Florida is on this. Uh, I'm sorry, um, um, Charlie, you know, uh, Rick Scott, okay? So, um, and he is a senator now. Now, he, she's, he's on there to recap the elections kind of with her that happened last week. Listen to what she says. I'll just, you know what? This one I'm going to shut up for and just enjoy, and I want you to enjoy it too. I think, I think what, I think what Democrats are going to continue to do is talk about Donald Trump. I think Republicans are going to continue to talk about issues. Glenn Youngkin won his race because he talked about issues, and I think that's what's going to happen. What we're going to see is just like in, just like in Virginia, Terry McAuliffe wanted to say, "Oh, there was nothing about critical race theory." We know that we know it's true. 
parents know it's been, their kids are being indoctrinated with critical race theory in Virginia. And the Democrats wanted to deny it. I and mean, so well, it's the not parents in the curriculum. showed up because they don't like being lied to. I mean, to. Just, just to be clear, it's not, it's not it's in the curriculum. It's not in the curriculum. Um, in Virginia. Uh, just, oh, just to oh, be... Oh, Brian, would you like me to... Here, let me just read you a few things. Uh-oh. Just to... In 2015, while Terry McAuliffe was governor, the Virginia Department of Education promoted incorporating a critical race theory lens in education. You can still find it on the Department of Education's website. still there. In February uh, 2019, a superintendent not, memo for the Virginia the... Department of Education promoted Senator, critical race theory not, in the idea yeah, of white Yeah, it is, Virginia. Brianna. It is. It's not, it's not I part of the curriculum. Yesterday. It's yeah. not part of the cur- curriculum. He looked and found it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can say it's not all you freaking want to. Doesn't matter because it is, and it still is, and it still is. No, I understand you're trained to say it's not in the curriculum. 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 But you're a moron, and it's in the curriculum because it's in the curriculum. Um, still I, there, I do want to ask you, just to be clear about Brianna, where you are. Let's, let's all agree. Just, they were do- trying to indoctrinate kids. Terry McCullough denied it. It's still on the website. It is. This is happening. He has blown this lady up, and it's bleeping awesome to watch. And I hope Democrats continue to say it's not happening because parents are dumb. They can see it. You're saying parents are dumb, you said? Aren't dumb. Yeah, he said parents are dumb. Yeah, you're dumb, Brianna, okay? You know that he didn't say that. No, they're not. I think parents are smart. My parents didn't have much of a formal education, but they cared about what I learned. This, parents I, are smart. I just, I just want to be clear. Okay, that the, Senator, the I just Virginia have to be Department clear. Virginia Department of Education not... promoted critical race theory, and, and Terry McAuliffe said they didn't. I hope okay, Democrats listen, keep doing that all Senator, across the country. Fine. Uh, it's not part of the curriculum. I would like oh, to move oh, oh, really? on with you. Really? Because he talk- just effing showed you the effing curriculum. Man, that is... That is ugly to watch. It really is. It's ugly to watch, watching somebody embarrass themselves in such a vile and sniveling way. He proved it's in the curriculum. I'm sorry. He brought the proof right there. It's not in the curriculum. It's not, but I just want to be clear. It's not in the curriculum. No, I know you don't want it to be in the curriculum, but it's in the curriculum, okay? God, arrogant, arrogant. These people, it's just incredible. It is incredible. Oh, man. They can't stop. They cannot stop. And it's just, in, it's it's wonderful to watch. Uh, well, is it wonderful to watch or, I don't know. All right. There's also a Slate uh, article. One of these, um, one of these um, um, advice things. Slate, uh, how to do it. I had a threesome with my buddy and his girlfriend. The consequences were unexpected. Now he's all in his head about it. Dear how to do it, an unexpected threesome with my good friend and his girlfriend turned into an amazing... Wait, is this by a woman or a man? An unexpected threesome with my good friend... Oh, and his girlfriend. Okay, I see. Wait, but is she a woman? I'm not sure. Uh, it turned into an amazing experience had by all. Nothing has changed between us in the time after. We've also had a few threesomes since. During the unorchestrated moving and jockeying the first time, they did. They ended up in a uh, position where, man, it's a number. It's a palindrome number. He, um, he, uh, oh man, the guy, okay. So this is the guy um, took care of him orally, and especially, and later they both did, which was simply extraordinary. Problem is that I've started to okay. The problem is that I've started to let him uh, be hospitable with me that way when we hang out alone. We both identify as straight, but I've never been that rigid about it. Well, apparently neither of you are very rigid about it, and that you identify as straight might be one thing, but. I would say that once you're being overly hospitable to your uh, friend, who's the same, who's also a guy, it, it's time to relitigate the straightness. It starts spontaneously and has increased frequently. He feels guilty after, and he has made comment that his girlfriend is not altogether at ease. But the uh, bu- uh, about the 
whatever when she that accommodation when she sees it so she thinks it looks unmasculine or something she has no knowledge of the favors i'm receiving and to be honest with you uh uh have had no problem receiving them okay uh his guilt however in the aftermath every single time has begun to affect me as well were he not feeling guilty, I would not want to stop. He's my friend, so I'm concerned. But at the same time, it's great, fantastic, even until it's over. I've never once initiated. We have talked about his guilt, and I've assured him that it's not ex that it's not expected. But he is giddily uh, all about it every time. What is my move? Stop hanging out? Resist him? Uh, I'm not sure what to do. So the, the okay, uh, okay. So anyway, the the magazine slate says, imagine if I told you that you could ha have great. Uh, accommodations with somebody else without the baggage of the situation by choosing virtually anyone else to to do it. Yeah, so this is what I feel. This is Dear Tom, this is. Um, I would think that the problem is um, that you're having a threesome with a couple friend. I think that's probably... And the guy is... And the guy is in fall... And you're hot and heavy with the guy there... So, um, huh. What kind of chump guy ever agreed to these rules, by the way? Really? That's what we're doing? All right, so I get to, I, Tom, I get to have a, um, a, uh, rigid, unsavory, phallic experience. Oh, okay. He gets my girl, and they have... Shouldn't the single guy be bringing some other thing to the table? That's my ruling on this. Absolutely. That's what needs to happen. So, among other things, uh, hang on one second. I have been thinking about the um, the bill, the, the huge uh, infrastructure bill. And it's mostly a big waste of money. And it's terrible. And it goes to a bunch of woke things. Social justice things. You heard Peter. Um, you heard Peter uh, Buttigieg talking about it. I do think that if there's anything good about it, then maybe it is that Pelosi has shafted the squad now because they all sat out, and Republicans filled the void. Who I'll never forgive, of course. Um, and now. We've got a situation here where they're powerless. They can't hold anything, lord anything over her anymore. She's found common cause with these most these Northeast Republicans who are willing to vote in on some kind of bills. So they have worked, or she has worked around there. Let's see how they handle this, because I think they're looking at next year and they're saying she's going to be gone. We're going to be wiped out. The squad will still have their seats, but I think they're going to be saying, okay, so what do we, what's our move here? And I think their move is to be even more radicalized if you e can even uh, uh, imagine that. Um, and <laughs> good luck with that. I, I think that, the, the, that although a lot of people think it's not swinging back, I think things are swinging back and people have had just about enough of this craziness. All right. Let's see. Dennis Prager is in the news. He, uh, I think did did he get did he have COVID or he's not getting vaxxed or something like that? Anyway, he is, um, is very salty about the uh, the treatment of people who are unvaccinated. You no, know, what she found funny was that she doesn't have a magic wand. This is he's laughing first about Jennifer Granholm, who uh, remember we played last week. She was laughing about high gas prices, thinking it was just the most hilarious thing. So, so we'll start with this. Then he gets to the vaccine things first. But first, he's talking about this. In Sturgis, Michigan, it is $2.89 a gallon. I guess that's better than in California. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. As you know, of course, uh, oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC. And they made a decision yesterday that they were not going to increase beyond what they were already planning. 
Right. So she's happy to laugh about it. And that's what uh, Prager is initially talking about. Then he's going to get to the other stuff. Uh, so I'll start with that. No. What she found funny was that she doesn't have a magic wand. But somebody in her party has a magic wand. The reason we're paying so much is because the magic wand of the Democratic president was to destroy the uh, the energy independence of the United States of America. With one magic wand, the man ruined our economy, ruined the ability of the of the lower and middle class to pay their energy bills, as in Germany, by the way. Uh, it, this is not just unique to the United States. A anywhere that you have people who are governed by fear of global warming, uh, a, 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 an idiotic irrational sick fear of, of of extinction of the of the biosphere i mean do you understand the 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 nonsense that we live with it, it it's it, if we survive this as a free country historians will just ask how did this happen how did people get governed by irrational fears whether whether it is of of the non-vaccinated who who are the pariahs of America as I have not seen in my lifetime any pariah group like uh, like this during the AIDS crisis can you imagine if if gay men and intravenous drug users who, who the, the, were the vast majority of people with AIDS had they been uh, pariahs the way the the non-vaccinated are. But it would have been inconceivable, and it should have been inconceivable. They should not have been made pariahs. Mm. But uh, but yeah. this is well, culture. This yeah. is okay. You can make the non-vaccinated. So uh, it, it's a different well, America. Yes, uh, correct. Correct. It's a good uh, parallel he brings up. Now, another thing that they're doing today is Joe Biden, the Biden administration, you know that there's been a halt put on the vaccine mandate thing for, among other reasons, it's... Um, it's um, it's not constitutional. So uh, so the, the it's been halted. Currently, they're fighting it out in court. Now, the White House is telling businesses to proceed with a mandate despite the court ordered pause. They're saying, yeah, no, we don't care. We want you to go and make sure everybody's vaccinated. And if not, be prepared to pay fines, which is absolutely and totally crazy at this point. I don't know what we have to do. I don't know what it takes now at this point. What do you what do you want to do? Is this one? Is this a never-ending, uh, like a merry-go-round of mandates and masking and masking and mandates and um, emergency powers for governors and and all these extraordinary measures and then overspending, woke spending, which and there's no nobody cares about the price tag, spending trillions of dollars and trillions, and there's still the other bills coming down the pike now too, the other the soft infrastructure, the Build Back Better socialist uh, climate bill. Like where is where is the uh, pushback on this stuff? But they don't care. These are activist madmen who are now running this government. It's crazy. It ain't good, and it's not going to end well. And somebody, I hope that somebody uh, can get to somebody and say, "Hey, you know what? Maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it doesn't make sense if we are destroying our." workforce and uh you know coming down on them at a time when there's a huge labor shortage you know from from everybody from you know bus drivers all over to football players poor aaron Rodgers now is sound now, now a radicalized red pillar because the guy's allergic to two of them vaccines and he doesn't trust the third one and the nfl is putting the screws to him and he's like f this i realize i'm in the crosshairs of the woke mob right now so before my final nail gets put in my cancel culture uh, casket i think i'd like to set the record straight on so many of the uh, blatant lies that are out there about myself right now um first of all i didn't lie in the initial press conference uh, during that time it was a very, uh, you know, witch hunt uh, that was going on across the league where everybody in the media was so concerned about who was vaccinated and who wasn't and what that meant and who was being selfish and who would talk about it and what it meant if they said it's a personal decision. They should, shouldn't have to disclose their own uh, medical information and whatnot. Never learn. Never learn. 
And they're trying to hunt him down. They're, now they're going after Dan Bongino and his sponsors. Like, they, they are never sated, these people. Because Bongino doesn't want to have the vaccine. So they're saying, hey, just so you know, you can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. Craziness. It's craziness. Some, you know, it's going to have to be a civil disobedience on the people who don't, who have had enough of it, who uh, who don't want to be faxed anymore and don't want to wear masks. Certainly they're wearing masks. I, my goodness, I, I, the best thing that could possibly happen is that more people, and I know it's tough to do, but more people could homeschool, take your kids the hell out of the school and have the money follow the kids wherever they go. Because this is nutso. This is nutso. Leave the kids alone, you psychotics. It's craziness. And they're wondering, like, why all the harm is being done? Why are all the kids screwed up? Why are all... I talked about it on my radio show in Connecticut today. It's like, we've changed kids. It's now going into... Some kids have been wearing masks and they've done stuff in an unusual way for now almost two years. What are we doing here? What? Why? Why are we extending the runway on this pandemic when it doesn't need to be because Rochelle Walensky has decided that now everybody has to stay healthy all the time, including uh, the flu in common cold. Like, man, just F off. I don't, you know, I, I, I hope Donald Trump doesn't run for president. I think he probably will. I hope he doesn't. I would have thought that last time that after, especially January 6th, that the chances of this guy ever being elected are nil. But my God, if Democrats aren't finding a way to make it happen. It's craziness. It's craziness. And it's now, it's it's all of this gaslighting and all of this. It's one half of the country has stopped being normal. They've become these zombified, woke uh, uh, machines that just go around looking for woke stuff everywhere and wokeism and this and that and and looking and saying how terrible the country is. And, and they use this. It spread like wildfire. And it's, a, it's the fact that... I don't know. I'm mad at many people in middle, of, not middle America, but certainly people on the coast who just buy everything they're ta- told and never bother to look. It, it just they buy the comfortable Starbucks going, um, you know, line of the day, no matter what it is. I remember back in 2012, whatever it was, that Mitt Romney had uh, started a, a war on women, war on women, war on women, and and I heard it, and I heard it from people I knew, saying, yeah, well, Mitt Romney, he's starting a war on women, and like not, and then like with the, when Liz Warren was was going against Scott Brown, you know, and I said, you know, it's pretty bad that she culturally appropriated from Indians to get into Harvard, uh, you know, for an advantage, for a leg up, appropriating somebody else's life, oh, that's old, nobody's talking about, it. we're not talking, stuff. really, like, what do you really care about, who's giving you the instructions of how to think? Because it's not your own critical thinking that's at work here. You just think that you're supposed to believe certain things and, uh, you know, if you're a certain kind of person. You know, you're supposed to, I don't know what people wear now, but you're supposed to, like, wear the right kind of J. Crew clothes and uh, wear the drink the right kind of chai tea and, and you know, all, 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 everybody own the same Peloton and love Liz Warren and love wokeism and have the Black Lives Matter thing in the in the yard and never bother to learn about it. It's totally disinterested. It's r- crazy to me. It's like, why why is it that only conservatives ever, ever bothered to go to the website of Black Lives Matter and see what it was about and see that dissolving the um, nuclear family was a priority? Why did only we do that homework? You're the one who loved Black Lives Matter. Why didn't you guys do any damn homework? But no. All you knew is you just took it as law. No, Black Lives Matter. It's a good thing. It's all a good thing. You can't say all lives matter because that's racist. And the thin blue line, that's racist too. And police lives don't matter. Stop it. And there's been too many uh, people killed by police just starting, um, you know, starting with um, Trayvon Martin, who, of course, wasn't killed by a cop. But they don't care. It doesn't matter. No, that's what we're told. That's what we're told. Beyond Brianna Keeler and CNN. No, nobody's teaching critical race theory in class. It's not part of the curriculum. It's just what we're told. Just Well, look at the curriculum. Rick Scott looked at the curriculum and he said, well, there's critical race theory there. All you have to do is look at it. But you don't want it. It's just better. It's more fun to just join your team. What do you believe? I believe anything that my team believes. Really? What the hell kind of way is that to live? 
never vetting anything, never checking to see that everything is um, is logical and makes sense and is factual? How do you grind your, ground yourself if you just simply accept uh -huh, everything that they tell you to believe? Because Rachel Maddow has the sounds of newspapers folding and things in her transitions uh, and that she uses big language and is a good broadcaster and sp speaks uh, with quips and smiles during it. Do you think you're getting smarter? You got to vet that stuff and check it out because NPR is freaking bland as hell and woke as hell but comes booming over a tax-subsidized FM signal uh, with all thoughtful voices speaking in NPR voice. Uh, you, you know, you don't vet anything that they're saying. These people are dummies. These are activists who are behind there. But it feels smart so that while you're driving in your Volvo listening to NPR, you think, you know, I'm doing the, thing, the things that good people do. God. It's just monotonous. And I don't even care. And I understand that there are people on the right who do the same, same thing. But not to this level because the people to the right are exposed to the to left information 500 fold over people in the left exposed to uh, conservatives information. Democrats don't care to even check out what conservatives are thinking because the tribe rules tell them that conservatives are just bad, evil misers who are uh, racist and who are really afraid of change and are probably stupid if they're not evil, which a lot of them are. That's the extent of it. And it's like, it, it's fine. It's fine. But as long as you know that you're only going to remain stupid, unless you've topped out, that's it. But it's wacky. <sighs> what else is going on here? I put my little punch list together here. So I'd have this. Okay, let's see. L.A. Times. Okay, the L.A. LA Times. Um, let's see. The COVID pandemic just highlighted across the nation a trend of looking at the inequities in learning circumstances for students. But those different circumstances of learning have always been present. Never get sick of it. The inequities. How about the inequities caused when you abandon the classrooms and marginalized students were uh, have now been lost to the world in the ether? The inequities. Man, it, it's remarkable. Remarkable. The, the lack of introspection. Faced with soaring Ds and Fs, schools are ditching the old way of grading. Oh, that sounds that sounds brilliant. That sounds brilliant. It's like my, I remember when I was a uh, I was a concierge at a hotel, and we um and they were we had a meeting us in the guest services department, concierge Bellman Dorman, and uh, and we had a meeting because because we our comment cards were terrible. People were saying that we weren't attentive, and we were whatever. They were just terrible. You know, we were <laughs> live by the comment card. There's no way to live. But uh, anyway, so uh, I suggested that we get rid of the comment cards. Problem solved. No more problem. That's what they're suggesting in L.A. Get rid of the grading system. Then no one will fail. And you'll have equally, everybody has the same suck education. Rather than try to get people to strive and achieve, we'll just flatten everything down. Flatten everything down. Some students accumulated so many points early on that by the end of the term, they knew they didn't need to do more work and could still get an A. Others, often those who had to work or care from, for family members after school, would fail to turn in their homework and fall so far behind that they, that they would just stop trying. It was literally inequitable, uh, he, he said. This is Joshua Moreno. He's a school teacher. It was literally inequitable. As a teacher, you get frustrated because what you signed up for was for students to learn, and it just ended up being a conversation about points all the time. These days, the Alhambra High School English teacher has done away with points entirely. He no longer, get out of here, he no longer gives students homework and gives them multiple opportunities to improve essays and classwork. The goal is to base grades on what students are learning and remove behavior, deadlines, and how much work they do from the occasion. 
good. How are you supposed to know what they're learning unless you grade them on it, unless you test them? The changes Marino embraced, play, embraced are part of a growing trend in which educators are moving away from traditional point-driven grading systems, aiming to close large, large academic gaps among racial, ethnic, and economic groups. Once again, um, hold on. Should we try to call us? Okay, once again, listen to this. The changes Murano embraced are part of a growing trend in which educators are moving away from traditional point-driven grading systems, aiming to close large academic gaps among racial, ethnic, and economic groups. It's closing the gaps. That's your equity right there. Regardless. Oh, the, the new goal, guys, is to not educate the hell out of the students. The new goal is to make sure everybody's the same. The trend was accelerated by the pandemic bullshit and the school closures that caused troubling increases in D's and F's across the country and by calls to examine the role of institutionalized racism in schools in the aftermath of the murder of George Ford Floyd by a police officer, which is significant of nothing because it very rarely, really happens and the guy who did it is in jail now, okay? Building entire new systems based on fallacies Okay, Tom, relax, relax. Los Angeles and San Diego United unified the state's two largest school districts with some 66, sorry, 660,000 students combined have recently directed teachers to base academic grades on whether students have learned what was expected of them during a course and not to penalize them for behavior, work habits, and missed deadlines. The policies encourage teachers to give students opportunities to revise essays or retake tests to show they have met learning goals rather than enforcing hard deadlines. Wow. Hmm. But that is what they're doing. I mean, but just, but that's, you know, that's part of the experiment that we're doing here. Part of the experiment that we are doing here. Uh, I'm not going to call Allison again because Alice, I don't think she feels good. But we'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes and how far this goes. It is, it's going to make a difference next year on midterm elections. It's going to make a difference that happens in local elections as well. <sighs> Back to the story the tur turtle boy had. Charlie Baker, appointed press secretary for Department of Conservation and Recreation, uh, advertises spicy OnlyFans account on Instagram. Uh, she goes on Instagram as Live a Little. Uh, filmed, uh, she has a um, one post that says, Filmed a new uh, ASS play content last night and how my little, oh, okay, uh, area is so sure. This is Olivia, Olivia Dorrance, the press secretary of the Department of Conservation and Recreation, appointed by Baker in 2018, has a racy OnlyFans account. And I'm uh, going to have to tell you that uh, I uh, support her. She is a photogenic young lady, and if she's on OnlyFans doing uh, stuff to bolster her state pay, then I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I, you know what? Expose yourself to art. Embrace uh, your body. And um, uh, Olivia Dorrance, is, uh, she's good looking. There's more, you know, what's wrong? I don't have a problem with it. OnlyFans is a legal thing. She's a, a woman over 18. She's just doing... She's doing something. You know? I have no problem with it uh, whatsoever. And uh, you know what? In the spirit of outreach, and uh, I don't know her politics, but she might be a Republican. If she got that gig, she probably is... If she, she was probably a flack in the state Republican Party at some point. All right. So that is enough for me right now. Alice Shattuck is winding home 
uh, from her, I don't know, does she have COVID? What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I appreciate it, guys. Please uh, check us out on all the things that we're on. And all the, by the way, listen to this. This is what Alice tells me. I say, uh, okay, don't worry about it. I'll, I can do this show alone. She says, oh, don't worry. I know. Don't worry. I know you can handle it. Yeah. I. You think I can handle it? I've been doing it. I used to do I did the first hundred alone. Can handle it. She's sick, though, so I'm not going to say anything. She's a very nice person. I love her. She's um, a real nice cat. Follow us on all our stuff. Alice always says this, so I don't know. You know, it's uh, Burn Barrel Podcast here and there. Uh, Instagram and oh, and uh, my OnlyFans account and, and Twitter and um, the other ones that Alice usually tells you. You know what they are. You know the thing. By the way, Elmo, of course, is in the news again. Whatever. I don't want to get... Alright, take it easy everybody.